How does Rumi humbly invoke the Divine Beloved? How does Divine Mercy surpass all human kindness? How does God's forgiveness impact the seeker's path? In today's episode, we'll uncover Rumi's vision of mercy. A mercy that doesn't simply forgive, but deeply transforms the soul. Ey homayi ke homayan farrukhi, az to darand o sakhawat har sakhi. Imagine a world where grace flows like an endless river. This is Rumi's vision of the Divine Mercy. He begins by painting an image of a majestic bird, the homai. A symbol of nobility and beauty that all creatures yearn for. But Rumi goes deeper, suggesting that true generosity lies beyond the human act. It is hidden in the essence of the Divine. In a way, he implies that earthly generosity is like a shadow next to the Divine Mercy. ای لطیفی که گل سرخت بدید از خجالت پیرهن را بردارید رومی speaks to this generosity with a humility that breaks through his words he is asking for forgiveness not with the confidence of one who deserves it but with the trust of a seeker who has seen something beyond he invokes the divine as the pardoner suggesting that true forgiveness isn't just about erasing wrongs but about embracing us faults and all, with a love that surpasses judgment. Rumi's language here is bold too. He speaks of foxes that, through divine mercy, become bolder than lions. It's a compelling image, suggesting that even the weakest parts of us can be made strong through divine mercy. Rumi describes the sinners as bold, almost reckless. Why? Because they are intoxicated by the vastness of divine forgiveness and it gives them the courage to face even their deepest failings. But the poem takes us even further. Rumi turns to the bitterness of a separation. A longing that feels sharper than a hundred thousand deaths. The absence of the divine, he says, is more painful than fire. Sat hezaran marg talakh shast to, nist maunand firaq ruya to. To die in the hope of union with you is sweet. The bitterness of your separation is worse than fire. Bar omid vasl to mordan khosh ast. In these moments of longing, Rumi pleads not just for forgiveness, but for closeness. He begs for mercy in a way that's almost childlike. Striped of pride and formality. Do anything, he says, anything but leave me. Rumi isn't content with just receiving forgiveness. He longs for divine connection. To be constantly within the embrace of the Divine Beloved, far from the bitterness of separation. <laughs> Here, Rumi reveals the heart of his message. Seeking forgiveness isn't only an act, but an invitation to divine presence. A nearness that can heal the soul. He is begging the divine. I am nothing without you. Who am I to ask you, the Sultan, for forgiveness? Man ke baosham ke beguyam afkun, eito sultano kolausay amrekun. Rumi then shifts as if realizing he must also honor this act of 
divine grace with gratitude. He sees his own prayer.